Welcome to AI for a Better World. Cover one eye for me. Try to read the smallest word on your screen. A little blurry? For more than two billion people, that blur is daily life. Many cases preventable. Today, how a simple eye scan plus AI can spot trouble early and help save vision. My guest is Professor Piers Keane, Professor of Artificial Medical Intelligence at University College London and a consultant ophthalmologist at Moorfields Eye Hospital. Piers helped kick off a project with Google DeepMind that turned routine eye scans into an early warning system. Piers, welcome. It's a great pleasure to talk to you. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Great. Well, let's start at the beginning. Why did Morefields partner with Google DeepMind? And what problem were you trying to fix when eye scans started piling up faster than specialists could read them? There were there was a few different problems, but before I say that, just to say I'm an ophthalmologist, as you've said, but I particularly specialize in the treatment of retinal conditions. The retina is the wallpaper of the back of the eye, and in particular, this condition called age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And this is by far the commonest cause of blindness in the UK and the US and Europe and many other regions around the world. There's a few different challenges that we face. So the first of these challenges is that in the UK, in our National Health Service, ophthalmology has overtaken orthopedics as the number one busiest medical specialty in terms of clinic appointments. Nearly 10% of all appointments in our National Health Service are for eyes, and that has risen by more than a third in the last five years. So the brutal truth is that there are people that are losing sight because of delays in being seen and treated. The second thing is that we have conditions becoming more common and as we get older, a recent study in Europe suggested that about 25% of people over the age of 60 have at least the early signs of age-related macular degeneration. Given that 60 is not even that old anymore, this is a mind-boggling number of people potentially losing their sight from this condition when they develop the severe forms. In the UK, about 400 people develop the severe blinding forms of AMD every single day. And then maybe the last thing that I'll say in terms of why I started this collaboration bet between Morefields and Google DeepMind back in 2015 and 2016 is because I had a patient of mine. Her name was Elaine Manna, and Elaine has spoken publicly about the fact that she had received treatment for age-related macular degeneration. And what happened with her is that she lost the sight in her left eye before we had good treatments. When she started to lose sight, she got an urgent referral to be seen but still was told that she needed to wait a few weeks for an appointment. So can you imagine losing the sight in your good eye and actually being told that you needed to wait to receive treatment when there was treatments that could save sight? Now, Elaine was able to get it seen and get treated, but because of her experience, I began to think maybe if we have an AI system that can pick up the most sight-threatening diseases, maybe we can save people's sight. Wonderful. Well, let's talk about the moment that changed the conversation. Back in 2018, your team published a study in the medical journal Nature Medicine showing AI could read eye scans at a level comparable to top specialists. For someone sitting in a clinic, what did that actually change? Essentially, what we did there was show that the AI system could look at these eye scans, which are called OCT scans, optical coherence tomography scans, which is the main type of imaging that's done all around the world to diagnose these conditions, and could assess them with the same accuracy as world-leading specialists for more than 50 different retinal diseases. And so that's what we publish in Nature Medicine, but we're still now on the journey to go from code to clinic, which is to say an actual algorithm that is being deployed at scale in millions of people all around the world. But the dream is very much still alive that that is something we're going to achieve in the very near future. Wonderful. Well, let's talk about the shift to Google Health and creating insight. 
What does having the world's largest library of eye scans now enable? And how does that make a difference when you talk about scale? Well, all of the experience we've had with artificial intelligence in recent years suggests the more data that you have, the better the algorithms will perform. The collaboration with Google DeepMind in 2015, 2016, that involved sharing uh, initially about 1.2 million anonymized retinal scans with Google DeepMind. Now, that is a potentially sensitive topic because that is sharing NHS, our National Health Service data, with a company, we do feel very proud that we spent a lot of time focusing on patient privacy and, and patient and public involvement and ethical approvals and engagement and telling the world about what we were doing before we did it and why we were doing it. And so as a result of that, we got a lot of praise, including from medical privacy advocates, about the way that we had done the collaboration and the safeguards that we had put in place. So we were then able to get funding from the UK government in 2019 to create Insight, which is the health data research hub for eye health. We have created a cloud-based data pipeline at Moorfields, which has more than 35 million ophthalmic images linked to clinical outcomes. Think what we can do with 35 million scans across a range of different eye diseases. So not just macular degeneration, but also other conditions like glaucoma and cataract and a range of other sight-threatening things. Okay, let's talk a little bit about RetFound. That is a large AI model trained on about 1.6 million retinal images. So it can learn new eye health tasks quickly and be adapted with far less data. In plain English, what makes RetFound so transformative? And where is it already in use? And is it available openly for researchers mm. worldwide? So just to say, um, we and our initial work was with Google DeepMind, but what happened was because we were able to build this data infrastructure, we were able to develop a lot of other collaborations, including with computer scientists in an academic setting. So we were able to work with University College London to develop RetFound, Retinal Foundation. The term foundation model has gotten a lot of excitement in the last year or two because it's the term that's often used to describe generative AI and use models like ChatGPT and other things like that. Now, the key aspect of these models, the algorithm would learn from all the scans, even if you didn't have the disease labels or other features labels on the scans. You can then take that model and use it as a foundation for lots of other different, what we call downstream tasks. If you wanted to develop an AI system to diagnose glaucoma, you would get a small number of scans where you have labels for glaucoma, and then you would fine tune the foundation model so it would be able to do that task. And just to finish the, po the last part of your question, which is about, is this available? Is this being used? We made the model code and the model weights open source for non-commercial use. And it's not yet being used in actual medical devices, because of course, before you can use any of these AI systems for direct clinical care, they have to have regulatory approval. Wonderful, this is so exciting. Let's look ahead, practical impact, you know, not hype. Okay, over the next decade, how do you believe AI will continue to help millions avoid sight loss? And also, what should medicine adopt from the Moore Fields approach? What gives mm. you hope about human AI collaboration, Pierce? I think in ophthalmology, and I care more generally, for me, the promise of AI is how we can bring specialized expertise, world-leading expertise, out of centers like Moorfields and into the community and closer to patients in their homes and in their, their daily lives. So we have a situation, for example, in the, UK, in the UK, if you're going for an eye test, you go to your local optometrist, and you can have one of these retinal scans, these OCT scans done as part of your normal eye test. 
And so for me, this is very exciting because it's as if you could go to your local family doctor, had an MRI scanner that they could just scan your brain or scan some part of your body when you went to them. Now you go to your optician, you have an eye test and you have an OCT scan, and we will be able to pick up the commonest causes of blindness. And not just the commonest cause of blindness, we might be able to pick up lots and lots of other systemic disease. So using the eye as a window to the health of the rest of your body. Well, that's wonderful. Listen, Pierce, you've given me a lot of hope. I believe our audience, you will also give a lot of hope about the future of human AI collaboration in healthcare. Thank you so much for your work and for being with us today. We'd love to have you back to share what's next. I would very much love to continue the conversation. Thank you. Great. For everyone watching, early checks save sight. Please book a routine eye exam, especially if you're having problems with your eyes, you have diabetes, or you're over 50. I'm Kathy Rubin. See you next time on AI for a Better World.